Now, you may have noticed recently a new trend in hatchback design. Cars like this VW here. They are essentially still hatchbacks, but they're a bit taller and quite a lot more expensive. Now, their makers will tell you that they're a lot more versatile, a lot more practical, and all the usual old toot. But are they actually any good? Well, to find out, Hammond and I had to subject them to years' worth of hard abuse. But we had one evening. So, how are we going to do that? How are we going to give them a lifetime's use in half a day? Easy. We're going to take them minicabbing on a Friday night in South London. Our shift starts at four in the afternoon, but it goes all the way through to the fighting and kebabs hour of one in the morning. So let's have a look at the minicabs that we'll be driving for nine hours. I'm going to start with the Renault Scenic. It's got five seats, it's very well equipped, but it costs £18,500, two grand more than the equivalent Renault hatchback. There are loads of cubby holes in here, some of them quite obvious, such as this one, and some not so obvious, such as this one. And the centre console can be made to slide backwards and forwards, so you can trade rear legroom for cup holders. And there's more. There are three individual rear seats. They all slide, they all fold, or they can all be removed completely so that you can moonlight as a van with a helpful driver. And this is Ford's version. It's called the C-Max. It's based on the next Focus, and it too has got five seats and a hefty price tag of £16,500. It's a tall car, presumably for tall people. It seats five, but if there's only four of you, then the rear two-seat passengers have got a treat because you can roll that middle seat forwards, actually take that out completely, then the outer two slide backwards and together, which is clever. Then, at the front, there's the centre console. It doesn't move around or anything, but it's like one of those puzzles. Open the top and there's a bit of storage space, and then you open it up again and look, there's loads! So I'll tell you what really amazes me about this. When I went for the test, I had to fill in a huge form that said, I hadn't murdered anybody, I wasn't psychotic. And you could drive a car. I could drive a car, I wasn't going to overthrow the British government. And then I had a medical. At no point did anybody issuing this ask me if I had a sense of direction. Well, we'll soon find out, because here we go. This is me. Roger, thank you. UK991, Rettlingham Road off Merton Road. Rettling, Rettlingham Road? OK, here we go. Mini cabin. Unlike Hammond's minicab, my Renault actually has sat-nav, but I'd be cheating if I used it because A, it's a £1,000 option and no minicab would have it, and B, it would mean I actually knew where I was going. So instead I've got plastic stick-on compass and, of course, the trusty old A to Z, which is now more like a B to Z. It is, I've got to say, a bit gloomy in here, but there's loads of space. If I got a call from Control right now saying the Pope needed picking up from a nightclub, no worries, straight in here. In truth, I'm probably not the one to test for headroom, but my first customer, that was a different matter. I'm your cab. Now, you're really tall. I am. So? Do you want to know how tall I am? For stats? <laughs> yeah, how tall are you? Go Six, on. five and a half. And uh, have you got room? I have a problem with headroom in a lot of these cars. And look, you know, there's a little bit of headroom problem here, but, you know. It's not bad. Are there any perks to being a pathologist? When I did find my first fare, she happened to be a fencer with a bag of nice, long swords. An ideal test, then, for the scenic. Would its boot swallow them up? No. no. Cheers, Mark. Nice to meet you. My first fair. Are you being recorded so they can test if you would be good as a presenter? No, no, I am a presenter. Oh, you Do you are... mind? Sorry, sorry. This isn't you... my real job. Don't tread on me brain yet, or I'll be stuck. At last, a car full of people, including a couple of burly rugby player types. Um, oh, right. where, where are we going? Uh, Wandsworth Common. Common. 
Um, straight ahead. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> We're testing uh, this yeah. car as a mini cab. It's quite good. It's quite, it only takes four, it's though. It's got loads of gadgets on that um, steering wheel. Oh. We've got uh, stereo stuff. They, is that for each seat, those? Um... Yeah, that's yeah. for him. Yeah, it might have to burn it off. off. Yeah, because I left his seat on five. five. You oh, see, I, I see. thought that might... It was the wrong thing to do now. <laughs> UK 98, UK 99. UK 98, receiving you. Yes. It's a ladies' hen night. Call me POB, make sure you get the right people. Two cars, your contact name is Bonnie. I just hope nobody's sick. Oh, there's a man with his girlfriend being sick on him there. That's nice. It's a quarter to one. <laughs> um, are you Hello. waiting for a taxi? Or um, two taxis? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Are we going to swap cars, mate? Because Well, I'll have I'll a go in yours. One. There you go. Fair enough. Um, somebody gave me some cheese. Really stinks. Smells nice in here. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Do, do you mind if I come back a bit? My colleague is rather short in the leg. I want to ask your opinion on this yeah. car. Well, on the smooth. car. Smooth. Okay. Spacious. I have it to is say, spacious. Look at it. Leg room. It's lots displayed. of leg room. Plenty leg room. Rear leg room, you said, is, is not that good behind me. It's ordinary. It's, right. it's, it's nothing special. A good, um, what do you call it? Suspension. Suspension, that's it, darling. This car is actually much harder than the Renault in front. Yeah. I was just about to say that. Because that's actually French and very soft and feels quite luxurious, whereas this feels a bit more sporty, I suppose. Ah. Yes, the unmistakable sound there of a woman pretending to be interested. <laughs> Meanwhile, my lot had really focused in on what mattered to them. We have a drinks tray. Oh, brilliant. Do so we have a mini bar? Is there a mini bar in there? Oh. That's good. Is there a vodka? So are you going somewhere else tonight? No, that's the end of our shift. You're our last job. And then you're going... <laughs> so you can come party with us afterwards? Mm, no. Generous as their offer was, we had to decline the champagne and jacuzzi because we had something much more interesting to do. Come to a verdict on these people carriers. So we've driven them. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think I'd have the Renault. Well, I reckon the C-Max is gloomy. I mean, it really is dark and miserable. That's, and that's it's like a, living in a piece of coal. They're all about the interior, yeah. and the Renault interior is simply better. It's also got a, a stronger engine. Yeah. If I had to have one of those, I'd have the Renault. But I do have a bit of a serious issue, which is that compared with the equivalent straightforward hatchback in each range, these are about £2,000 more, and I still can't quite work out where the £2,000 goes. I'm thinking, for example, tonight, at what point did I really feel that I needed the scenic rather than Jester McGann. The dueling girl with the swords, mm. okay, I still couldn't get those in the boot. Your tall bloke, he still couldn't really fit in the back properly. Really. I agree. I think it's a slight con in that respect. I think maybe it is. So we're agreed, of the two we'd have the Renner. Yes. We can kind of see the point of mini MPVs as an updated hatch, but they're just not worth it. We can't square the price difference. £2,000 extra just smacks a bit of a rip-off. What are you paying for? <laughs>